Hello Bitwigglers, today we're having a look at the Launchpad Pro and also the Launchpad Mark II by Innovation and I was really impressed uh, how good uh, the Pro version got in contrast to the first release of the first Launchpad and has some really nice features with it and um, yeah I adapted basically the push script to run on the Launchpad uh, Pro which gives you a lot of features and functionality if you use it with Bitwig so we're gonna have a look at it and I try to keep it pretty the same as you get the, the, with the script you, that you run with the, the Ableton software uh, with some slight changes and a lot of extensions. So looking at the first one at the session view, um, yeah, this is pretty identical. A change I did is I don't make that too colorful. It was uh, much too much colors for my taste in the, in the other script. So if you select that now, you get um, the color only if you select it. So if you have track selected, it's green and mute is, is yellow and so on. The feature is also the same. You can press it once to keep it active. So the last, so you're missing the last row then, but you have always the feature available or you can keep it pressed if you just want to toggle something. And if you release it, it's back uh, to normal. And you have the same exact same functionality here as uh, with, a, with a normal script. So you can do record your uh, arm your record tracks, select tracks, mute, solo, and stop clips. These three are different. So you have here also volume, pan, and sense. And this is touch sensitive, so this changes very fast, or you can touch it softly. Then you can really nicely use it for automation or also for live improvisation. For example, you can have a filter change here and these things. Something to mention is that you still only have eight specific or concrete uh, values. You can move to them without uh, stages but it's still the end number is still eight fixed values so a little bit of a drawback but nevertheless pretty usable same is for panorama uh, here you can change it to left or right uh, and if you want to center it again you can press both uh, buttons and it's centered to zero again sense is a bit different um, if you have more than one sense you can select eight of your sense here so to select the first one this is a send maybe let's go to the mixing area and you see here also the color coding so now the first three cents are enabled and if you go to the next one uh, the others are enabled so i can change also the effect sense for the other tracks turn it down and up what you also might have noticed is that the the color used here is the color of the track so you can easily find your track so the drum track is green here and that reflects to that one the first one is blue and so on and this is for all the modes the case panorama as well and for the sands as well too so going to the next mode so these three buttons are used to change the modes so note mode is uh, for playing this is the same as push so watch my push tutorial to get an understanding to how you can use it um, just the modification of this area is different up there you can change your octaves uh, with that button you can change your scale here you can change the layout and that one changes to chromatic or, or all of them uh, by the way, this is the identical uh, view to what comes out of the box with Launchpad. And these ones are used to change your root keys. Yes. What else do we have? Press the button again. You get uh, the drum view. So let's go to the drum track to show that. Here we have the drum view. And that's also a feature I want to show. The mode is remembered for each track. So this one is now the playing. If I go to the drum track, I get my drum tray layout. And also what you see, you also get the colors, which you don't get with Ableton. So if you make those colors green, this is the green area. You can also say my kicks, for example, I want to have in red. Then the kick is red, snare is in that color and so on. And as the same as, as the push script you have here, you can play it. You can change here the clips and the, the clip size. And up there you have the grid. So let's start that one. So you see the bass drum. 
this mode is also quite quite the same to push so take that for reference that one is the resolution and to get to the sequencers who are on board you can press the shift key also in combination with the note first one gives you the normal uh, note sequencer from uh, push and pressing it again in combination with shift gives you the raindrop sequencer with its funny features and the last mode is the device mode so if you select the device for editing you get the color coding now of the editing control so the first control is red and let's change that uh, back to here so these are the controls the controls here uh, so first one is red orange and so on and if you change them you can see it same here if you press it fast it changes fast or you can press it slowly to move it slowly using the the arrows up there you can change to the different parameter banks you have available for example now with the frequency selected also in red so you can move or change the the frequency here uh, here is the same as, as with the sense. If you go to the second one, you uh, change it to editing your macros. So you can now modify your macros. And if you go back to the first one, you're back at editing your parameter pages. Real fun begins if you press the device again. This is a new feature uh, starting with Bitwig 1.2. We have a really powerful and nice browser. And what I did is you have several columns here with your browser. The last one contains your presets. And this is reflected here also with color coding. So the presets are the yellow one. Here we have the blue ones. So this one is no feature. The green ones for the creators and so on. And if you press the lower button, you're going down. Upper button goes up. And if you use the ones in between, they are moving by eight. So if you want a faster change. You might wonder what these are for. So these four are for previewing your sound. So you can pretty quickly go down and preview the next sound. And uh, if you want to keep your new selected sound, you can use the green button. And for discarding it and going back to the old sound, use the red one and both close the browser. So that's accept as one and the browser closes. What I did not mention so far is uh, the left one. These are the navigation buttons where you have uh, several options like uh, turning click on and off, undoing and redoing. So you can keep the combination with shift, uh, undo, uh, undo and redo here. And if you use the click button, you can tap the tempo. So the tempo changes and delete button acts like a delete button and the only real feature is if you are in the session mode and want to delete a clip you can keep the delete button pressed and select the clip you want to delete and it's gone okay quantize is still a little bit limited because the api is missing that a bit um, you to make quantize work you have to have the clip selected and in view then it works and duplicate duplicates a clip so if you have that one selected and press duplicate it's duplicated and in combination with a shift key it does something totally different toggles the loop on and off the double key um, since double uh, is not available in bitwig api i chose this button to use as new if i press new it creates a new clip in the next empty slot uh, plays it back and enables overwrite so you have a fixed length clip playing which is ready for overdubbing and you can record into that fixed clip since i noticed there is no play or stop button uh, on the launch pad and uh, I did that with shift and the double button so this is play start and stop and the last one is for recording so uh, let's go back to that view so this is a global recording we start recording here and if you press it again recording stops if you use it in a combination with shift it toggles the overwriting of the clip recording there is also some hints on the selected track. So I have now three tracks and you see that button is a little bit whiter than the other ones. I hope you can see it in, in the video. And if I select that one, that one gets whiter. So uh, in, in the brighter white, you see this currently selected track. And also this front LED is giving you the color of the currently selected track. So let's change it to the drums 
and it gets green and the first one is the blue one so that's also a nice little indication okay now we are looking at the launchpad mark ii which has exactly the same functionality as the script for the pro version except that the launchpad is missing these and these buttons here and it's not uh, velocity sensitive so you cannot do those nice fades and these things but the layout is the same so what i did to replace the missing buttons is the following you can press the mixer button and what you get is um now the lower row is uh, the features of those buttons here and the the first column till that button replaces these buttons and what you also get is like when you press the shift button on the pro you get more features these are already here so these are the shift features here and the only shift feature here is that one. Oh, I forgot that one for the pro version if you do shift and press the stop button you stop all clips it's hard to remember what these do so here you have the description so you can also use these um, buttons to get to the feature and i did the same color coding so volume here is that volume button pan is the pan button here and the sands are here so you get the idea um, so they're in a different order so related to their description and do the same thing so let's go here we have the volume control now exactly same thing oh we don't have a track here so there's a volume and let's do some more tracks and also you get the color coding of the track so let's change the color here let's make a green one and let's make that one blue i hope you can see it in the video so you have now the same color as on your track basically that's uh, all about the difference between uh, two scripts you can do the same stuff you can go to the node um, mixer replaces the shift key so to get to the sequencer modes keep the mixer pressed and then do the user and if you do it again you get to the raindrop sequencer so normal sequencer raindrop sequencer and if it's not pressed you toggle between the play mode and the drum mode yeah something i also need to mention is um, for the pro again um, in the script settings there is one feature for the pads so the pro version sends poly aftertouch if you keep the button pressed and wiggle it some way around um, and you can choose what to do with the poly aftertouch so you can use it as poly aftertouch but you can also uh, replace it with um, channel aftertouch and you can also turn it into a cc for example you can use it as a modulation wheel and you can even completely turn it off if poly aftertouch somehow interferes with your plugins yeah thanks for watching that was a presentation for the launchpad pro and the mark ii and enjoy and make some funky music